hello hello ladies and gentlemen this girl uh, this my name is Mitzi I'm just a little tongue-tied I'm sorry <laughs> but on today's episode we are thinking about monsters in our head you know and that's something that we really need to think about and start sharing with other people because we all are victims of having monsters in our heads. Let's be honest. It's inedible. So luckily for me, I have a special guest on my show, Sheridan. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing this great, great topic. How are you doing today? Oh, it's been a it's been a great day so far. Um, you know, it's cold, it's drizzly, it's rainy, it's 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 dark and dreary. So me and my boys went to go watch my wife be in a parade because that's what you do. <laughs> well, right, you gotta you gotta support them no matter what, what type of weather it is, right? You gotta be right. there. Awesome. You know, and they, they, we can sat in the house and pouted and moaned and whined, and or we can go out into the weather and cheer mom on in her parade and and just embrace it, right? Right. It's the same thing with the with the monsters in our head. Like, yeah, mine. Uh, it's funny too, you know, like. When we talk about the monsters in our heads, we don't put them there, you know. Yeah. Like, like we're not we're not born and or you know we turn like seven and go, huh? How can I mess up my brain? Oh, I know. Right. You know, like yeah, like these these things they 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 get put in there, right? Like, it's shame, right? I struggle with shame for a long time, shame of existing, right? Yeah. Because, uh, you know. I, I I didn't pick up shame. I didn't I didn't I didn't say I want to be ashamed of myself. Shame yeah. gets put on us like a backpack, you know? And then yes. just gets more weight gets put like like some like, walking behind you putting rocks in your backpack until eventually, you know, you just we can't carry that, right? Exactly. The same thing with, with all of it, right? It's it's nothing we we, we never asked for it. But no. we, we end up with we get this this this, you know. Um uh, I'm indigenous. I'm 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 part Native American is what they call it in the south of the, the parallel there. And we call that having a rider. Okay. A dark spirit is riding you, right? Riding you. Um, well, I didn't ask. I didn't ask this person, this, 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 whatever this was to join me. I didn't, I didn't say, hey, you know what? I want my life to suck. So can you hop in here and mess with my brain? That'd be great. Thanks. Appreciate it. Right. Exactly. No, and that's I, the thing that a lot of people really need to acknowledge. Like you didn't invite this into your life. Like this, this has just happened because it's kind of like how you said when you sent me um the little little snippets um when you came on when you requested to be on my show. It's like one thing that really stood out to me was like the monsters in the world and and then the monsters in your in your head. And that's why I wanted to choose the title as monsters in your head because you interact with monsters in the world first before you even acknowledge that now you have monsters in your head because you see them in in front of you and now they become haunting you in your mind you know and that's how I interpret it but how do you interpret it when you said it because obviously everyone's perception is different so I love to hear yours on that matter yeah well um Let's talk about how the monsters I picked up as a kid, you know, that were that were given to me. Um, how I uh, how I dealt with them incorrectly, because it's how I was taught to deal with them, and then how I learned to deal with them in a healthier manner that's been proving very effective. Um, so, yeah, I uh, I was uh, I joined the Canadian Army many many years ago, and did some stuff and saw some things. None of that was monstrous. Some of it was hard. Some of it sucked. Some of it was awesome, right? Like all things in life, you know? Yeah. Um, then I became a prison guard. But by the time um, I started becoming a prison guard, I was already losing my battle with the monsters in my head. I didn't know I was fighting. I didn't, I didn't realize that the voices, you know, the voice in my head that told me that I was, you know, I, I I was unworthy, that I was undeserving, that I was less than, I was not as good as, I wasn't, right? That voice, that lying voice, I didn't realize that that, that monster, that demon was lying. I didn't realize that I was losing the fight. Yeah. Like, we don't, we don't, 
we have this idea in our culture, our society, that if you're struggling, there's something wrong with you. No, 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 no. Like, I don't know if I can swear on this podcast. Go ahead. I'm telling you, there's okay. nothing taboo you okay. can say. Anything All you right. can say, Anybody say it naturally. listening right fucking now, you listen to me right now. You hear me right now. If you are struggling, motherfucker, that's good. You're winning. Your demons cannot beat you. It is not possible for a demon to beat you. The moss in your head cannot defeat you. It can only convince you to surrender. Yes. It, it's only when you stop fighting that they win. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I love the way that you put it. This, you have to be transparent. You have to be you. You know, you have to just say it the way that it, it comes right to you. You know, and that's why I love my shows because I give people the freedom to be themselves and just say how it is because that's the best way to say it. You know, you said it perfectly because let's be honest, they cannot control you. They cannot do anything to you unless you allow them. You know what I mean? You give it permission. You you convince yourself with what you, with what's being said is true. But not everything in our mind is true. Not everything in our mind is factual. So not- little of it actually is because it starts when we're kids. We're told, okay, like um as a as a as a as a as a boy in the 70s, the 1970s, right? Um I was allowed to experience one emotion. Anger. Right. If I if I if I expressed sadness, if I expressed loneliness, if I expressed fear, if I allowed any of these natural body responses to come out, um, I would be I would be made to feel as though I was uh, wrong, as I, I was flawed. I I wasn't right. I wasn't good enough because yeah. that made the adults in my life uncomfortable because they were taught the same thing, yeah. right? We, you know, we're all taught like, you know, boys can't cry, right? Well, here's a, here's a little tidbit. Um, crying is our body's natural response to certain things. And it's the yeah. best and fastest way for us to activate the parasympathetic nervous system, which calms us down and kicks us out of fight or flight. Beautiful. So you cry, good. You know, you should cry. You should. If, if, you're, if you feel like crying, that's because your body's saying, hey, I got to calm down, so I'm going to cry and calm down. But when we try to fight that, you try to, try to fight your body's natural response, nothing good comes of that, right? Like, that's the same thing with, you know, the monster in our head quite often, quite often is just our body trying to tell us a thing and us refusing to hear it as much as it is hearing the voice in our head of our parent or, or guardian or some adult somewhere who's repeating the lies that their grandparents and great grandparents told them through their parents. Yep. It's this trauma. And then it keeps going down through generation and through generation. I think that's the beauty of now our generation. That's my generation that's arising. And we're trying to speak up and break those bad generational habits because yes. we realize how toxic it was for ourselves and our parents and now it's like do I really want to continue that for the next generation like no we don't right. we want to we want to acknowledge the fact that you know we can do something different and like these voices that we hear we all hear them we all just don't want to in- admit it and talk to other people about it because the first thing they're going to label you is crazy and schizophrenic and And that's a taboo. And to seek mental health help is a taboo because you're always afraid that they're going to throw you in a mental ward. And mental wards has a big stigma in its own self already. So it's it's a bad situation to be in. But for you, when did you realize that your mental health was as important as your physical health? When I was going to kill myself. Yeah. Kill myself in... uh... In uh, 2016, um, so yeah, I did several years in the army. I'm, I'm indigenous, you know. You just, you just, you're just pouring slew into a sewer, right? Like you, you're not, you're not getting a drink of water out of that shit, right? It's just, that's not good stuff happening, right? I did that for years and years and years, pushing down emotions, right? Not allowing uh, responses to come out, right? Not allowing myself to be scared. Well, everything we do, every decision you make is based on fear because it also goes through your amygdala to scan for threats. Every, mm-hmm. every decision you ever made in your life. You no no human 
in the history of humanity has ever made a logical decision because every choice we make is first based on either the presence or absence of fear because yeah. everything we perceive through all our senses goes through our uh, limbic system first where the amygdala scans it for threats and goes nope 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 ah! right so yeah. as long as it's going nope 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 then whatever it, that just gets gets passed up to the rest of the brain right where we can actually mm-hmm. think right? yeah prefrontal cortex and all that sort of thing but first first before you anything else your amygdala has to say yeah okay yeah okay yeah okay right if at any point it recognizes what it thinks is a threat whether it's real or not yeah. humans are the only species that react to a psychological threat like if you were to start calling me names for instance right mm-hmm. in my very fragile male ego where to be right i'm gonna react as though i'm threatened I'm going yes. to react with the same response to you, a very, very pretty girl calling me names, as I would uh, to a bear trying to eat me right now. The same fear response would happen. Yeah. Even though you calling me names so many miles away <laughs> means like it's, there's no threat there, right? Yeah. But my brain would react the same way. So I push that down, push that down, I push the fear down, and then, well, it has to come out. So yeah. then that just feeds that voice. You're not good. 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 You're not good enough. Yeah. Right. So in uh, 2016, um, my first, my first, my first wife, we were married for 20 years and she was chronically depressed as well. I didn't know that. I didn't know I was either. Wow. Yeah. That's hard. Right. Like, just, like guess we didn't talk about, we didn't talk about something like that. Yeah. That was normal. That was normal back then. Right. So yeah, 2014, um, she died. Um, she'd, she'd starved herself to death. It took her two years. So the two of us were going steadily crazier and crazier. Um, I didn't know what to do with that, how to deal with that. I didn't know how to deal with my emotions about it. Like it was just, just this, just this gigantic, horrible mess. These two people so desperately seeking connection with each other and unable to just stop fighting each other and fighting ourselves long enough to just just connect right yeah so uh two years later um my now wife um new current wonderful wife uh had given birth to my first child um we had a son he was about six months old and i wasn't able to I had completely fallen apart. I completely exploded. Um, I was totally just really, I, I had, I had, I didn't have emotional responses. I was just at emotion, just, just rage, which hides fear. Yeah. I was just a scared little boy who didn't know how to put his man pants back on. And yeah. um, I had a child. And I didn't know how to love unconditionally or be allow anything to love me unconditionally. Mm -hmm. And it was all too much for me. So I decided the best thing I could possibly do to save my child from me, from becoming me, because that's a fate worse than death, because I'm the biggest piece of shit on the planet. The only solution, clearly, obviously, the only solution there could possibly be is just you know, yeah. check out, right? Just what else could there be, right? Just we'll just check out. Good plan. Go with that. Um, which is the second time. The first time I was going to kill myself. Well, no, third. The, the first time I was a teenager. Uh, the second time was when my first wife died. Um, and with plan B, um, not deliberately, I had no choice. I couldn't find a home for our dogs. So until I could find a home for all three dogs, right? It has to be the right home for all three dogs. I couldn't kill myself. And then it happened. And then my current wife, you know, exploded into my life and took over my life. And that saved my life for a while. And then she gave me a son. And so I decided, okay, I had to kill myself to save him from me. Yeah. And right that's the monsters my head right it made total sense it made total the monster had almost beaten me i'd almost stopped fighting i'd almost given up right i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it like i'm right there but i wasn't done fighting because i still recognized i was being lied to so i put the 
implement of death down. I picked up my phone and I called a therapist whom I'd been very, very mean to a week before. <laughs> and she said, okay, let's work on this. So I decided instead of surrendering, letting the monster kill me, I'd like to fight that fucker. Oh, I love it. You to, to be honest, you remind me of my stepdad because he has like the same type of personality, he kind of talks like you. So it's kind of funny um, when, you, when you're talking because sometimes it reminds me of my stepdad because his story is a little similar. Like he, he, But instead of being native, he was... He lived on the reservation for a really long time. So he he picked up on their habits and their traits. And in it, it, it's kind of like that. His monsters in his head is just a little differently than what other people's are. And the way that you handle them, the way you speak about them is the way that he does too. And it just, it makes me realize that it truly, these demons, these monsters, these, no matter what you want to call it, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, these voices that are in your mind that are making you choose the wrong decisions does, I, does like how you said, it sounds very convincing. It sounds very plausible. Like, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. What's the point of living? You're right. I'm, I'm worthless. Nobody cares about me anyways. Nobody needs me. Nobody checks up on me. I'm just a waste of body. I'm a waste of breathing air. I'm just, I'm just taking up space. You know, I'm paying bills for what, you know, like every life is pointless. And at the end of the day, you can agree with it when your mind is in that mindset. You know what I mean? It makes, it makes sense. So to say to, to for you to hear you say, oh, it took me three times each time was a different milestone in your life it makes sense because that's how it was for me it was a different milestone each time in, in my life and those dark days those those dark dark days hearing those monsters in my head it truly just made sense but at the same time it was just so overbearing to to hold you know what i mean to hold yeah. all this weight like right. and, and 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 it's unrealistic to hold all this weight and i just had to tell myself like like no, this is this, I I shouldn't have to be living like this, you know. Right. It, it's it's so stressful. It's so stressful to live in your own mind and not reach out to anybody else. Because once you get to that point, you don't reach out to anybody. You don't tell anybody what's going in your mind. You don't. I mean, to hear you say that you called the therapist and you're like, oh, I need help. I mean, to be honest, that's surprising. That's uh, that is surprising because not a lot of people would even go to that point. Usually, they'll try to like go take a walk and all of a sudden they hear somebody say something about God or say something about like a, some testimony and then they change. And sometimes it, it doesn't work like that. You know, sometimes, you know, religion doesn't help you. Sometimes like music doesn't help you. Sometimes you have to help yourself. That's a hundred percent. Here's the thing, right? Like, yeah. The, talk about the isolation thing. That's, that is the first thing mental illness does. It's the first thing our demons try to do because the cure to depression, to anxiety, to PTSD, to alcoholism, the, the cures to all the shit that I've gone through has always been connection, positive social response from somebody else. Because I need, I need you as a human being. I need, we are a mammalian group species, like horses, like wolves, like, like when you Maybe. hold someone's yes. hand, right? When you hold someone's hand, your brain releases oxytocin right serotonin feel good hormones because we are we are literally wired for connection right if we could reach to the screen and hold hands for like eight seconds our bodies would go hey this is awesome and reward yeah. us with that connection right mm -hmm. so the first thing an illness tries to do a demon tries to do is make you pull away right you yeah. leave right you push everyone away from you but he's telling you they're leaving you because you don't deserve them. Yep. You don't mm -hmm. deserve love. Pushing them away, pushing them away, walling up. I'm good. I'm fine. Leave me alone. Right. Go, like whatever. Push them away. But they're leaving you because you don't deserve them. Yeah. Got you. Well, fuck you, motherfucker. No. Yeah. It's. It, I mean, it's. 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 It's kind of crazy when you hear that voice because for me. I always hear it when I'm driving. It's like, oh, mm. crash, go right? off the bridge. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I thought, and There's for the pole. longest time, I thought I was the only one that heard that. Like I was like, oh, oh. like you know what I mean? But then I heard other people say it, and then I heard a pastor say it, and then I heard somebody else say it. I was like, 
if it can affect a pastor, it can affect the CEO, it can affect a, a, a police officer, if it can affect anybody, then I'm not the only one that's going through this. That's and I right. think this is the beauty of, of a community and the beauty of just communicating and talking to people. And I guess it leads up to my next question is like, what made you what made you actually share your story and 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 let people know because well, you could have so kept it to yourself and just first, been happy all along yeah well first i had to i had to like reach out if, if, like you talked about the monsters that i walked amongst right in in the prisons that i worked in um mm-hmm. not all the inmates were the monsters quite often a lot of them were just deeply damaged from monsters and a lot of the guards, most of them, just as damaged in almost exactly the same ways. Yeah. And in fact, quite often the guards are more victim than the inmates because but it's just it's just it's just this twisted, sick dimension. Like we're trying our society tries to punish mental illness out of the mentally ill, doesn't work. Try to punish addiction out of the addicts, doesn't work. Try to yeah. punish uh ethnicity out of an ethnic person. You know what? It doesn't matter what you do. This person's always going to be who they are. That's just what they were born. And so, so, stop it. Yeah. Right? But, yeah. So you have, I was walking, right? Getting ready to go. Right? I'm back in hell. I'm, in, I'm at work. I'm in hell. And I was working a special unit that works programs. And it's, it's to help um, uh, addiction recovery. And it teaches, it teaches, you know, not just like AA and, and smart and psychology and addiction recovery, but also teaches like life skills. Teaches it teaches these men how to read a clock, how to do basic math, how to cook a meal, right? Things they never they never learned, right? And I'm watching these guys, right? These you know the losers of society, right? All these scum. That's how my brain worked when I first joined, right? Yeah. And uh, I'm like, wait a second. When I beat alcohol, I had. I had all the support in the world. Half my family's in AA. I had the army backing me up. I had all the support in the world. And these guys have the world stacked against them, and they're trying. They're not quitting. They're not quitting. Yeah. So these guys with nothing and the world stacked against them aren't quitting? Motherfucker, you can't quit either. You can't check out. Yeah. You're a dad. Yeah. You're a dad. So if you're not happy with the dad you are work bitch (laughs) for real like change it someone told me the other day if you're not changing you're choosing your life if you're not changing your life you're choosing your life right it doesn't matter what you do if you if you if you don't if you give up control if you let the demons the monsters or society or anybody else have control over your life you will be miserable yeah Point blank period. Let's be honest. Those are the monsters, the ones who are trying to manipulate you and mistreat you and just f- put you in fraud and and in these terrible, terrible situations for their own benefit and gain. At the end of the day, you deserve better, and you deserve better not for the physical aspects of what's around you, but you deserve better for your mental health. Because at the end of the day, I don't want to see anybody anybody go through that point where they're facing that you that cliff of suicide and death because let's be honest because once you're at that point it's literally like a cliff you're just right there just Mm -hmm. "Mm, it's easy i could jump it's it's right there whatever whatever you choose to do that self-harm it's not necessary you know what i mean like that's the thing like if if we could just get one thing across to everybody that's suffering and struggling and so terribly alone in this world one thing you know just like hey you're not alone i mean yes. and you, you gotta fight the demons they go monsters we gotta fight them with compassion and fact compassion we gotta be kind to ourselves and to each other you yeah. gotta be kind you gotta be kind to you you gotta be as kind to you as you would be to anybody else in the same boat because yes. you are both children of whatever whatever name you apply to the divine power of the universe right whatever name you want to give it you are both just as you would be as kind to someone else who is struggling because they're a child of of God, of of of, of the universe, of whatever. So are you. Yeah. And you owe are you are you are responsible for everyone in your life. And that includes you. 
Yes, yes, right? I love that. I love I love how you said that because it's true. I heard that somewhere on the radio where somebody said that um we are more kind to other people than we are to ourselves. Right. And I had a th- and that made me think about it for a second. I was like, yeah, you're right. I am nice. I am compassionate compared to other people. Like I give people the the benefit of the doubt, and I I, I don't I don't stress. You know, it's nothing. No spill milk bothers me. But if it's me, it's a problem. You know what I mean? Right. If I don't meet up my own standards, it's a problem. Like I pound myself. Like goodness, Mitzi, how dare you? And it's ridiculous because it's not fair. It's not fair. So I love the fact that you said that, and you and you gave people an understanding, like you know, compassion you know, is something that really, really, really goes a long way and facts, because come on, you can't, you can't use those facts, use those facts, because I swear the devil will only throw thoughts and opinions, but in reality, you have facts, the Bible, whatever you use for your proof, use it as your weapon of choice to fight your own self because sometimes we're in a battle within ourselves and it's crazy it's absolutely crazy and i know the time is catching up to us but i want to i want to see if you can just give us one last great 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 advice because you already gave us some really good tips and i love your perspective and and how open and transparent you've been this whole entire time but what can be some lasting words that you can give my audience um so that they can really think about this differently so uh to answer the one question there how why i told my story because people need to hear it. Because if I can come forward, the big tough, look at my tough guy tattoos, look how scary I am. If I can come forward and say I struggle, then anybody can, right? Uh, one piece of advice to quote, uh, it's, it's the facts. It's I, I was going to kill myself because I was the worst father in the world, period, full stop. I was going to ruin my kid. So my brain, while I was standing there looking at these, these men in prison struggling, and winning their fights because they were fighting, right? So I asked myself, hey, are you really the worst dad in the world? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. Well, let me ask you this. Have you ever raped your child? Well, no. Then you're not the worst father in the world, period. Have you ever mm-hmm. beaten your child? He's six months old. Of course not. Well, then you're not the first worst father in the world because there are men who beat the infants, yeah. right? And then just go through the checklist, right? Yeah. Go through the checklist. Are you doing these things? No. Well, then, here's the thing, people. My brain, I argue with my brain, <laughs> and it asked to be this question Did you not read seven books on parenting back to back because you don't know how to be a parent? Yes, I did. So, does that not mean you want to try to be a good dad? Yes, it does. Then you're a good dad, motherfucker. Because people who are bad don't care that they're bad. Yeah. People who That's... want to be good are good because they want to be good. It's that simple. So everybody listening, why should you reach out and get help? Why should you connect? Why should you do the work you got to do to get better? Because you're fucking worth it. Why are you worth it? Because you're trying to be a good person. It's that simple. And if you're trying to be a good person, then by definition, you're a good person. And there are not enough good people in the world to lose one. So work. I love that. I love that so much. Thank you. That's beautiful. That's that's beautiful because people need to hear that. That's true. If you're working and you're trying, then that's all you need to do. You know, there's no such thing as perfection. And if you're reaching for perfection, then stop it right now because you're perfect as you are and you're good as you are as long as you keep trying. The goal is one life. And if you had, if this was the only life and you, you, there was no reincarnation and no nothing, and this was the only one you got, wouldn't you want to make the best of it? The best of it? I mean, come on. And it's like you said, there's not enough good people in this world. So embrace the goodness that you have because you know what? It is. It, it, it's what makes a difference into someone's life. I always say a smile, a thank you, opening the door, just, just the simple things truly makes my day because when I'm out and about, what do you see? Grumpy people, rude people, selfish people, you know what I mean? People who are trying to like scam other people. It's ridiculous. But when you see that someone who's sincere and helps an old person or gives somebody the benefit of the doubt, I mean, that right there, that's when you realize like, you know, goodness is still in, in the world and that's what we need to embrace. So thank you so much for coming on my show, Sheridan. You brought such a great perspective, such a great 
way of thinking about this in a different different perspective because if somebody in your shoes was able to overcome this disease of you know just the mind just eating us up inside then anybody else can do it too and i and i and i appreciate that and if anybody wants to know more about sheridan please reach out and you will not not be disappointed y'all already y'all always always keep thinking bye